Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are exploring the question, what makes someone creepy? Ooh. And other questions that we receive from you, mythical beasts. Yeah, there's uh, lots of lots of thought provoking questions. I'm trying. I'm conjuring thoughts. Wasn't easy. Hmm. Um, I'm having trouble conjuring thoughts at this moment. I don't just say fair con- warning. Don't say conjuring because it makes me think of the movie Conjuring, and I just was talking about it with someone last night, and I don't like to think about it. Then why were you talking to somebody about it? Because you do. I'd like love it. to talk about it. You do. Like I just it. don't like to think about it. Okay. Um, so we're gonna get we're gonna get into the the world of creepy and some other things, uh, including uh, if we had like a triathlon of dad sports, what would they be and who would win? I got some. All right. I got some thoughts on that. Other stuff too. Um, but first, I wanted to check in with you. Uh, I've noticed something that has happened a couple of times. I've been visiting your home. Oh yeah. Uh, you have nonchalantly said, okay, Google, dim the lights in the living room <laughs> or something along those lines and yeah. they've actually dimmed or they've, you know, you've, 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 you've spoken to your home. Uh-huh. And I know this is not. That's right, we have a. This is not a new thing. I have an intimate relationship with my <laughs> home. And uh, I am in the process of going full bore. Well, yeah, all morning I was looking over <laughs> at you at your desk. I mean, just to kind of seeing what you were working on. It seems like you were it deep. It wasn't all morning. You were deep into figuring out like how to how to talk to your house. Yeah. I think you even Googled, I looked over at one point and you were like, how can I be as cool as Link? Yeah, it, it, it's interesting when, the, when you Google that directly. <laughs> um, Have you done that? What What pops up? A wiki how, which I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So you want you want to talk to your lights too? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, t- I talk to my lights. Well, interesting thing is, so I was uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Daniel, who uh, is the is the reason that we we look so cool on the internet. Uh, he, I mean, no, actually, yeah, it's Mike Feldman. He's the one that makes us look so cool in the merch. Uh, but Daniel does. Uh, if it's not merch, he he'll go out and get some clothes for us sometimes to to, to wear on the show. And uh, he he was in, and I was talking to him about uh, you know I kind of been looking like what smart bul- you got to get the smart bulbs like you got to get the bulbs that can that can be spoken to or mm-hmm. basically they register with your. Uh, you, well, you can do the bulbs, you can do the things that you plug in, but you also have to do the switches. And the reason I yeah. wanted to do uh, the bulbs themselves and not just the, I know what you got is like a converter that you plug into and then it can control on and off or Yeah, you or plug it into the wall, then you plug the lamp into the thing, which I, incidentally, I got a couple of those um, from a GMM episode. I think it's where we were, we were remote controlling Christmas lights or something and I was like, hey, when we're done with that, I wanna take that home. And I, I hooked it up and then I just ended up getting more of them. And I did get one that was, Hardwired to my to my front porch lights so that I could uh, did, speak to did my. Did you home. have an electrician do that, or you did yeah. that? Yeah, I didn't know. I don't do electrical. Okay. I can't use a knife. Yeah, I can't I, use fire. I can't use electrics. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to get because I want it again. I want to be able to control like the front lights, like you know the lights. That, right now they're on like a timer, but I'd like to be able to control like the lights that are on the house, the lights up the driveway. And then all, all lights, but so you also got to get the anything that's like an overhead light that's like we have recessed lighting in most rooms, and it's like that's on a switch. So now you got to get the switch that you can be controlled. You want to talk to every single light in your house? All lights. That's too much. Well, you, 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 I'll you, be the judge of that once I can. Cont- you, you're I can going talk overboard. To everything. You're going overboard. Well, you know why I'm going overboard because when to I was talking like to Daniel, no, because no, see, you gave me an idea of what it could be like to be cool. Okay, but you actually aren't. Okay. You're not as cool as I'm gonna be when I can literally speak to every light source in my entire house. I, and let me tell you much. what, here's what here's what Daniel told me about. He said, I've got a friend who did this to their house and um, the reason you need the smart bulbs and not just the little converter is because these bulbs can be programmed to change color 
and flash and do all kinds of things based on voice commands and this guy has created a custom program for his different friends. And so he's like, hey Google, Sandra's here and all of a sudden it'll like flash red and it play like don't 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 like <laughs> Google so Home will like access a track. Connects to his to its Spotify playlist. So you think you're cool now, you wait till you come to my house and I say, okay Google, Link's here. And just see how cool you feel then. Well if you get the right camera, it your house will know that I'm there. I'm also doing that. And then you don't even have to say, okay Google, Link's here, which is an odd thing to say. Oh, do you think you can program an intelligent camera to recognize your face and then play a specific track? I'm sure you can. Uh, no. No, yeah, because yeah, there's, there's a missing connection. No, there's not because uh, these you're gonna, things have the. You're gonna basically rewire your entire house so that when Sandra comes over, it can flash red? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's nutty, man. It's not, I mean, that's novel. Well, but I, you'll never do you it. You know, interestingly, I'm actually surprised because. Well, I. For, for the re, the, you know, the reason I'm compelled to do every single light is because it just seems clean. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but the fact, it, just having a couple of lights you can control. The but lights. Then, oh, I gotta get up and touch the light switch for that one, Sandra. The lights that I control are the ones that um, I never walk past the switch. Or I don't want to walk at all. I want to roll or around the, like the a, ones that like I want slug to, to and be on a timer. Speak to my house. I mean, I'm just saying it's it's not going to be worth it to. to I mean, you to, you want to be in bed and say, oh, yeah. "Okay, Google, turn off all the lights." Well, I haven't gotten to there, but that's another great idea. See, that would be, but useful. not with Sandra. I have my different lights that turn on all the lights. There's certain lights that I want to turn on with the sunset that happens automatically, mm -hmm. and then they turn off at different times. Because well, you well, you can also set the routines. Nook, the nook light turns off at like nine. The chair light. I got a. I got a nook light, a chair light, a couch light, a front light, and a back light, and that's all the lights I got. Well, I'm all the like other 47. ones I use a switch. Yeah, it's so archaic. You have if to you, touch it for every Gross. light. For Rhett, for every light, you have to name it. You're gonna. You're gonna have mm -hmm. to name 47 lights, and then you're gonna have to remember those names. And I'm gonna do uh, cool names like Battleship, like Light B12. You're gonna. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to come up with a system. And I'm gonna be the only one who understands it. Right. And then you'll be. You got to talk to Dad if you want to light it. You'll adjusted. be. You'll be included with everyone who never so uses it. So it'll be like, it. okay, Dad, turn on light B twelve, and I'll be like, okay, Google, turn on light B twelve. I mean, well, no, they won't say B twelve. They'll say porch light, and I'll say C seventeen. I'm just telling you, man. You'll have to you, see. I'm exposing <laughs> it. I'm just. I'm. I'm looking out for you. You don't. I mean, I'm basically at you my wait. limit of mm. the number of light. Like I can't remember now. It's like you just told me all of them in the span of a minute. Okay, good. But sometimes I'm like, okay, Google, turn on the couch light, and it's like, I'm sorry, I haven't learned that yet. It's like it's very <laughs> polite. Well, that's just it like takes the onus on that's her. That's user like, error. You know another thing. It's I, tough to keep them straight, man. You're gonna have problems. Here's the thing: you can get your lights to be tied into your intelligent cameras, and so that if you happen to be out of town and someone comes to your front door, if the intelligent doorbell or the camera senses someone at the door, it can turn. It can be a program between at the hours of blank and blank. If you see motion outside turn on this light and so it makes it seem like somebody's turning on their bedroom light or oh. turning on another light. I mean this is so that, smart. That's a, they also, that, they're on camera and you can see them. And that keeps Sandra away. Yeah, well, it's Sandra is what Sandra. she prefers. Yeah, Sandra. She's insulted when you call her Sandra. Sandra. I'm gonna have a whole thing for you when you come over, man. And then you'll be like, oh, I gotta do this. I mean, that's, it's, a, it's a novel idea. I just. It's the future, man. Everyone's gonna be talking to their house and you're gonna be like, I remember in 2019, Russ started talking to his house in every which way. In too many ways. You can talk to it in too many ways. Now I, I'm a fan of like throwing something to the television to start watching, like watch a YouTube clip or just start playing music and playing music in certain zones in my house. Like right. I do that every single day and I'm like, I want this to play everywhere. We got a party. But Google, I want this to play just downstairs because Christy's upstairs and this taking is, a nap. That's a great system. Or but I Google want this to play only upstairs in my bathroom and my bedroom. Chrome, uh, Chromecast audio. 
I, I bought a whole uh, stash of those before they before they they off the market. But what I mean, I don't know why they did that. But what do you what do you do now? I mean, yeah, like, that's what, a problem. What, what, what do I do? There's still some floating out there you can no, buy. No, there's got to be a new. To there's got to be a new solution. You could do Sonos, not a sponsor. No, but I'm going to do the outdoor speakers too. They got to be hardwired to like a stereo head of some kind. Yeah, go and ahead. And your stereo head. Just has go a ahead and buy a couple of Chromecast audios right now. I'm just, seriously, they're still floating around. Just, just buy a couple for like twenty five bucks. Okay, just to have the option, because um, Google Chromecast, not audio, doesn't work with that system. It's a separate thing. Or because it doesn't have a, a three point five. Uh, Jack. I don't know, it doesn't, but I don't know if that's the reason why. But that's what audio has, right? Listen, this, it, if this were a tech podcast, people would be calling in and we'd no. be telling them all well, types of stuff. Well, this is my secret way of letting you know I'd like to make Ear Biscuits a tech podcast and two guys who don't really know anything about tech are gonna say things like 3.5 Jack. Like the click and clack of welcoming Sandra to your house. <laughs> Remember click and clack? Yeah. You call in and they would tell you about uh, automobile stuff. One of them died. That's Ben and Jerry. No, you're talking about click and clack. The NPR they had the show, the the auto repair show, and they and they were like wizards. Oh of yeah, cars. I didn't know one of them passed away. Yeah, I, I also didn't know that they invented ice creams, mm -hmm. which I I'm <clears throat> glad they did. Okay, uh, so we're not going to just talk about tech. I mean, that is the, what the podcast is about now. But uh, you know. We promised you we'd answer questions. So next week's all about tech. <laughs> and every week after. Okay, well let's get into some questions, but first, let's promote some merch. Well, You're wearing an Ear Biscuit t-shirt. You know, Looks good. Talk about meta. I mean, I've got an Ear Biscuit t-shirt. We're on Ear Biscuits. We're on the shirt. Now there was a, a point in time when I would have not wanted to do this, but I've embraced it. Uh, so here we are, merching it up. It's easier the for, show. you know, it's easier for you, listener, to go out in public with us on your shirt than it is for us to do it. So that's, that's true, I, you to I wouldn't it. wear this in public, but you should. I mean, it's a great shirt, I wouldn't wear it just because I don't like to be on my own shirt. I like to typically. be in my shirt. True. Uh, also, we got mugs that say the same thing on them. Uh, which is the name of this podcast. Ear Biscuits. Ear Biscuits. All right, mythical.store. Just uh, go over there and browse. You'll be surprised because there's something you didn't know was there. And now there's uh, a lot of tech, a lot of tech at the store now. Tech advice. Yeah, we, there's a, you can buy a, tech advice. There's a chat, there's a chat <laughs> button. It's like chat with someone live right now. And that's me talking about- For your tech advice. And my answer to all your questions Mythical would be- Mythical.store. 3.5 jack. I think it's millimeters. 3.5 millimeters jack. Yeah. That's my, actually my tech name is Jack. Link, you wanna answer some questions? Yeah, let's get into this, man. This is gonna be fun. Uh, so you wanna start with a creepy? Let's start with a creepy. I mean, I we teased with it and then if we don't, what if we don't get to it? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, this is a question from a while back, and then we never we never got to it. Now we think it's the best question. Well, a lot of people it thumbs what does that mean? thumbs it up on uh, Facebook, so they really wanted to hear the answer to it. Okay, An Angeline Batterman. Uh, sometimes I meet someone, and without even speaking to them or knowing anything about mm -hmm. them, I get a vibe of this person is creepy, or this person is trustworthy, and it almost always pans out to be true. Does this happen to other people? And if so, what the heck are we picking up on? Well, I, you know, I, I think that it's from an evolutionary standpoint, it's definitely advantageous to to develop the gene level skill of a sixth sense of knowing if someone's gonna kill you or maim you or otherwise violate you. So it makes sense in theory that we would have this inexplicable sense of creepiness because I am saying that creepy is correlated to uh, getting maimed or otherwise violated. And then personally, I think I experienced this. I think I do have a sense. Like if you started showing me, if you just went through a lineup of people and I could make split second decisions of creepy 
or like hot or both? Cre- creepy or hot? That's the decision I made. It was creepy or trustworthy. Oh. Where do we go? <laughs> How did we get to hot? Oh, sorry. I, was, I, hot is I usually, got a little distracted. Hot is not sort of a sixth sense thing. Usually it's sort of like, Oh, I look at them and find them attractive. In the same way that I feel like I can look at someone and be like, oh, given my personal taste, this person is is attractive. Or whatever, but I, I think in the same, in the same. Instant? Instant, I could, I could determine creepiness. Well, and I can do it to the same person okay. at the same time. Well, let's. And I can say that is that person is hot. Let's but explore creepy. what we think. That makes, person is hot because they're creepy. Let's make. Let's exp, we'll explore what makes someone creepy or what you think and I think. Because don't but, do you, don't you feel the same? Oh yeah, but uh, I I don't remember what this was in a book or an article or something, but um, an instant message. Someone was advising people on this exact thing, uh, which is when you have this sense that you can't explain that someone is creepy, you should always act on it. And you should- Trust your instincts. You, and you should always act on it without apology. So trust you, I mean- You should trust your regardless instincts. Regardless of, of, of who you are, Be, tr- trust well, your instincts and don't feel like you need to apologize. And you, should, and you shouldn't feel like <clears throat> you are, you know, don't judge yourself in that moment where you're like, oh, is there something in me that's bad? that I'm making a judgment about this person. It's just like, well, I don't know, but your safety is important. And I'm not saying you gotta do something. It, just getting yourself out of that situation, f- trust your instincts and uh, more often than not, they're right. But what is it that people are picking up on? Well, um, the first thing I think about are the eyes. And then the second thing I think about is the mouth. So I think about that area. like. Creepiness is not necessarily what the eyes look like, but the fa- if if you got like an like if there's a stare happening and it's like what how would you describe this like what about like I'm looking at you now, I'm just looking at you right, oh. but and now watch the difference. What 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 what's happening because I'm trying to put a name to that as what to me is creepy. So well, I, that's, here's, I'm just looking at you. That's pretty explicit, though. That's a facial. That's an aggressive facial expression. Okay, but but I'm just talking about listeners, somebody isn't the, doing anything. For the aggressive. listeners, can you just? I think this this is my answer. You flared so. your nostrils and you raised your eyebrows. Because no, I didn't. Don't look at my nostrils. I'm covering my nostrils and I'm covering my eyebrows. Am I covering my eyebrows? Yeah. All right. I'm just looking at you, and now I'm doing that. Well, you could be you could be surprised. You kind of just ra- you just sort of raised your eyes. You opened your eyes more. I bugged my eyes a little bit. I'm not talking about like picking up on facial if expressions. You, if you, I am, if you do, <laughs> my answer is if you bug. If your, someone makes a bug, bugs their eyes out of you. If you get out. <laughs> if you bug, if your eyes, buggy eyes, compared not compared but paired with a slightly open mouth. That's that's that's. Dead on creepy. Okay. Well, I don't disagree with that, but it, that just feels more obvious. Whereas I'm talking about like you've got. Well, then I'm starting obvious. So think about this. You got Ted Bundy, right? I, did you watch the Ted Bundy tapes? No, and I don't Netflix? know why anyone did. Uh, I watched a little bit of it, and uh, oh, I'm gonna watch hours and hours dedicated to. I didn't watch hours and demented hours. Demented serial I, killer. I watched a little bit of it. Well, a lot of people this love is, it. A lot of people <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not afraid to go against the grain. Um. I don't get it, man. And the you know, he the thing that made him such an an unusual serial killer is he was like a handsome, charming guy. But I bet I haven't seen it, but I bet he was doing that with his eyes. It has nothing to do with the expressions that he was making. Of course it does. But uh, so what do you okay, keep going. I mean, you're what, what, essentially what you're saying is that like if I were to go into a room and somebody were to go that w- and I just made a very angry. I didn't do that. Gorilla face. I just uh, went. I just went a of little course. like. Yeah, but you did a piece of an expression. But what if somebody is actually coming in and they're doing charming things? I believe that you probably could still pick up on something creepy. If 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 Ted Bundy has the capacity to kill you, but yet he also has the capacity to be charming and to make prolonged eye contact or whatever. Still think there's probably some something, and again, I do think that it's something visual, uh, 
aural, as in audio-ish. Um, That's what I was saying. That you're picking up on, but I don't think I don't think it's an expression. I think okay. it's things more subtle, like uh, posture or changes in tone of voice. I, I'm I'm saying in, in what? Well, okay, so what posture? I don't know. I don't. I'm saying oh. that I'm I'm saying I don't know what it is. I think it's super subtle, but I don't think it's like this guy. Every time I look at him, he he bugs his eyes out at me. All right, but it, okay, it's st- just like a a little bit of a stare. Mouth breathing, I think inexplicable smiling where you see teeth. Well, I'm okay then. Can't see my teeth. Where are you but coming like, up with these criteria? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just picturing creepy people, and I'm describing them to you. It's not rocket science. I mean, everything I've said is creepy, right? I mean, if they're staring and scratching, like in, <laughs> like. You're talking about creepy behavior though. I'm saying that like somebody walks in and they've been instructed to follow a protocol of behavior. That is like, you're gonna walk into this room and you're going to stand there and you're going to remain stone-faced. Two people do this, you think one is trustworthy and one is creepy and it isn't because someone made a face, it's because someone has a face. I think it's- You understand what I'm saying? N- n- well. There's something about their face, the structure. Okay, I'll go. Um, the d- distance if, of the eyes. The, if the percent, if the percentage of body fat contained on the face is below seven percent, you think some people have seven percent body of their body fat on their face? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. Maybe like a large-headed baby. <laughs> I'm saying the exact opposite, man. If your <laughs> if your percent body fat is seven percent, is seven percent in the facial, in the facial area, area or less, if you're like gaunt in the just in the face, yeah, I think it's like, I mean, like I was walking down the street <clears throat> one time and I saw, um, shoot, what's his name? Walter Scoggins, isn't that his name? The guy from uh, co-star with Danny McBride in uh, Vice Principals, Goggins. Walter Goggins, isn't it Goggins? Great actor, hilarious guy. He he's in the he's in that he plays the the harpsichordist in that new um, HBO show. HBO show that you showed me. I'm a huge fan of the guy, but he's got a creepy vibe. I mean, he's got a creepy facial structure. And like, actually, that's what makes him so castable. He's got deep set eyes, like me, but I ain't creepy because my because I got big fat cheeks. Oh yeah, you, He's got you're way gaunt, over 7%. <laughs> right, I got, I'm, I'm you really might like, have 7% of your body fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, I was uh, Link, Lincoln and I were like sitting in the hot tub and of course I don't wear my glasses in the hot tub and like I come up out of the water and like my hair slicked back and Lincoln's sitting next to me like we're both on a jet so like at point blank range. And I come up and he's staring at me like creepy and I'm like, what? And he's like, your face is shaped like a, like an upside down diamond. <laughs> what? He's like, you got your cheeks. He's like, you look so different without glasses. And I was like, well, my hair slicked back. I was like, I look like granddaddy, don't I? He was like, your face is like a diamond. Well, he didn't say upside, he just said a diamond. It's like straight across at the top, comes out a little bit, comes out a big piece here at my at the points of my cheeks and then boop, boop. How was it? How's the diamond shaped? I mean, like, boop, like your boop, face upside boop. down. <laughs> Apparently, I got a diamond face. It's not creepy. No, you're not creepy. But more, like, if you can see more of the skeletal structure of the face, then you start to get creepy. And if you're scratching something, then you're off ch- off the charts. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're looking for something else. I sense. I don't know what it is, but I'm saying that there are these intangible things that you are picking up on, and it's not your conscious mind picking up on it. And that's why you shouldn't. Again, think, that's why you shouldn't judge yourself because you're picking up on something that you that again that you said is coming from like a reptilian part of your brain. That's not some conscious process. It's just this but I think, instinct and you should trust it. But it could be any I could list a whole bunch of other things like unkempt wiry eyebrows like or if there's like four or five that are just four like, or five eyebrows? Boing, 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 yeah, if you got thing. more than two eyebrows, that's definitely creepy. <laughs> You mean eyebrow hairs, okay. Um, 
Like if you're inexplicably smiling and but and you don't see teeth, but you're but you're doing something with your tongue, like you're licking your lips with your tongue. That's creepy. I think the problem actually is trustworthiness. Like I'm all over creepy, but tr- thinking somebody's trustworthy that's dangerous. Like you're giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. I I think you got to be really careful with that. Like yeah, they might have a a chubby face, chubby cheeks like me. But they might look trustworthy, but don't trust that. And uh, you, it, there is there like a Ted Bundy. There is a tendency to fall into um, prejudice here, right? Because people may be like, "Well, uh, I don't trust this person be- because of the way that I judge where they come from," and that's obviously bad. I'm not, and I'm not suggesting Shoot, do yeah. that because that you know you you get into some. I, I'm kind of talking about when you're in that, when you're in a vulnerable place, and you 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 get a vibe. Even if you get a if you get a vibe of trustworthiness, hey, you get a vibe of trustworthiness. Go into business with the person. No, you know, trust your instincts. Mm, no. Start a business right on the spot. No partnership. Uh, I, I'm disturbed that you were not able to say <laughs> one thing that you think makes people. You're like creepy blind. No, no. Because my theory is that what makes somebody creepy is not something that I can articulate, is something that happens in the reptilian part of my brain. And the reptilian part of my brain cannot speak, cannot form words, can't even really form thoughts in the same way. It just acts on instinct, cause and effect. And I'm saying that they're, and I'm sure that what they've done is they've done some study, if we were not lazy, I didn't wanna roll around like a slug and turn my lights on with my voice, yeah. then I'd probably Google what makes somebody creepy and there would be an answer. But you know what, that's what that's what the internet's for. That's not what Ear Biscuits is for. I think there was a Vsauce video on what makes something creepy. Oh, there you go, Vsauce has already done it. Why were you sitting here talking about it? Um, but he didn't say why people look creepy. Cause that, you know, that'd be a stupid, that'd be a stupid video to make cause you'd, you'd draw a lot of, well, I think you're describing me. Link us to and, the and leave that to me on our podcast. Which I think I'm li- sorry if you have a, a uh, like a like a skeletal face or that you lick your lips. I mean, I'm just saying. To me, you're acting creepy, and you need you need to stop it. Well, link us to a, an, an actual scientific article. Uh, hashtag ear biscuits. We'll read it. Others will too. Uh, here's another question from Megan Martin. What is uh, an experience you had as a kid that you wish your kids could have but can't? And then the opposite, what is an experience your kids have oh. that you wish you were able to have as kids? <sighs> okay, do you do you know what what you wish our kids could experience that they can't but we did? Uh, well, I think, it, I, I think about this quite often uh, and we, we've touched on this in general before but you know, just just the the amount of freedom. Whoa! Almost threw that off the table. The amount of freedom that we had growing up, which I think was partially regional and partially generational. Yeah, uh, being able to go off and do whatever we want to, and that is not something that our kids even have the capacity to do at this point because they got I can track their location on their phone. Summertime bike excursions. Uh, but this specific thing that I was thinking about was something we talked about recently that we did not that me and you talked about that we've never we've never talked about publicly, uh, was we were trying to remember when we were our son's ages, so like maybe even younger than Locke, so like probably 14, because it was 14, 15, it was like maybe the summer between eighth and ninth grade, Mm -hmm. uh, which incidentally is the setting for our upcoming novel, The Lost Lost Causes causes of Bleak Bleak Creek. Creek. Pre-order it now, bleakcreek.com. Com. It takes place in the summer of 1992. Uh, but anyway, uh, we had a friend, Ben, who what, we talked about him before, Ben Greenwood, the uh, book of mythicality was dedicated to Ben. He was an embodiment of mythicality, if there ever was one, passed away from uh, cancer uh, years ago. He was this incredibly adventurous guy who got us into so many things and somehow he talked to his parents and then we, uh, talk to our parents into letting us travel. They drove us in the Greenwoods Subaru from Buies Creek to Buckhorn Dam, 
which was, it's basically the beginning of the Cape Fear River. The Cape Fear River's headwaters are a little bit higher than that, but this is like, there's a dam there and you'd have to like go over the dam. And we right. got into a canoe, the three of us. Ben's canoe or Ben's dad, I don't know whose canoe it was. It was Ben's canoe, an old town canoe, oh, yeah. green, that was definitely not a whitewater canoe, it was like a pond canoe. But yeah. we took this canoe, there's only two seats in a canoe and then there's a crossbar and then we would take turns who sat on the crossbar and we, no supervision, no phone. We just canoed all the way down the Cape Fear River, all the way back to our homes. That is a long freaking way. I mean, it It probably, I mean, it was at least a six hour journey. Yes. And like we. Like, on the river. There was no like. Through multiple rapids. I'm gonna check in with you guys when you get to, you. this like Locke and Lincoln and a friend getting into a boat, driving, what dri driving them like an hour and a half away, and yeah. then just having them. All right, hopefully you make it. <laughs> well, we, you know, we worked, we worked up to it. I mean, I think the reason they had the canoe was because he could take it to like the lake on the golf course. We did it all the time, yeah. And and then it's like, well, on the far side of the golf course is the Cape Fear River, so we we could we could take it there. We'd cross the river in the canoe, yeah. Yeah, or just swim or whatever there. And then we would take it from there down to Irwin. But then at some point you're like, let's start at the furthermost point. And it, yeah, it's right below that dam. Like the water is like water falling down over that. But yeah, it's just crazy to think. I just can't imagine doing that with, entrusting Locke and Lincoln with that. Well, and I, I, I just always think, what does it mean? You know, I, I actually think that my kids are, you know, they're, they're a lot like me. They're they're super. They're naturally independent and like would do a lot of things without any, you know, pushback. Uh, but, but there are times when I'm like, no doubt, our tendency to do things like get into a boat because I'm not saying it wasn't it it, it still wasn't normal. It, our other friends weren't doing it. I mean, true. There were some people who were doing it, and it was sort of and accepted. We would, and it, we wouldn't be doing it if it weren't for Ben initiating it. Right, we needed somebody to let us know that it was you could it could be done. But I have to think that um, our decision to do a lot of things like that and having it be awesome and then having it turn out well is one of the reasons that we've kind of lived a, a, a life of what some people interpret as risk, risky behaviors, at least in terms of like taking chances on things and trying new things. Um. But sometimes I worry, okay, our kids don't have that, they don't exercise that level of independence and so is that gonna come back to haunt them? Are they gonna, are it just gonna happen in a different way? Yeah, like I think a, a sense of adventure for them is let's go to a rock climbing wall or like when I, when I was on this one stretch of mountain biking with Lincoln, I did realize that if, if, he, if he fell off the bike to the left, he would fall down. He would careen down a cliff. Right. I was like, "Oh, this Fun. is this is cool." I bet. I bet he's scared right now. I didn't ask him later because I realized we were going down the wrong path, and we had to turn around. And I was just very apologetic that we had to like push our bikes back up this really steep oh, hill. Push, huh? Oh, but yeah, I had to look on my phone in order to figure it all out. Which we had none of that. Of course, when you're on a river, you kind of it's easy to not get lost because it's there's only one direction. There's right. only one river. But you know the thing about Ben, he said he embodied mythicality, and um, the you know it's a, it, it's a credit to his parents that they were I I can't remember what we told our parents. Oh, we're going out with Ben on the river, kind of way. You know, it's like I don't know how much they really understood, but it was very clear that Ben's parents knew what was going on because they're driving us there, dropping us off. Yeah. There's, there's no question. My parents definitely did not know the extent. They didn't there, appreciate. There, was, there wasn't that, it wasn't that level of communication. It was like, I want you to tell me where you're going. I want you to, I wanna know specifically, I wanna see on a map, I wanna know when you're gonna get there. They were just like, oh, the Greenwoods got it. Good. Right, And the but the to their credit, I, I, you know, when I think about it, I just wonder if, I don't know, maybe this is a silly question, but because Ben's life was so sh so short and he, you know, he had, uh, he was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, I think in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So like he no longer could even come to public school with us, but like 
And then he was so limited that like, whenever he had the energy to do things and we were doing things with him, it was like he had a little bit more freedom to experience, I mean, he he experienced so much of life, especially given the, the physical limitations that from which he suffered. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I don't know, I, I take some comfort in that and I feel honored that we were along for the ride, literally a lot of times <clears throat> in his boat. But it, you know, maybe there was some sort of sense of, you know, life is short, go for it. You know, I, I think that maybe his parents had a sense of that. Hmm. Um, that that kind of led to, yeah, we'll drop you off here and like we trust you to be safe. He had a good head on his shoulders and he was like, he was smart about all that type of stuff, you know? I we, mean, and we trusted him with our lives, you know? Well, the only thing I'll say that makes me think that I don't, I mean, maybe they, were, that maybe they, they acted that way without even realizing it, but you know, he was that way from as far back as I could remember when I met him in third grade and then yeah. he had also, he told stories of Oklahoma, which is where he moved from. Um, you know, all the stuff that, when third grade you're not that old, right? You haven't lived a whole lot of life, but he had already done so many cool things. And, uh, and, and, um, and so I think they were just very, they trusted him um, and he was super responsible and we just did a, you know, it was, again, it was a different time. Not that we didn't almost die on the river many times, but, but you that's need, once we you, got our you kayaks. You need that, you need that. Well, and that's the thing, like, uh, it's so difficult to then, tr- then try to map that onto our kids' lives because I don't, you know, I think about, I mean, you got Lily driving right now, right? She's starting to, <laughs> yeah. she's learning to drive and, you know, when we were, 16? Well, no, I guess we were 17 at the time. Me and you just got into a car and drove to Indiana. (laughs) From North Carolina. Well, we were going to a wedding. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, we were meeting your parents there. It's just a road, right? But yeah, that's kinda, that's a long ways for for a 17 year old. Especially back then when it was like, literally it was a map. We had a map. Like a paper map. Didn't we, I thought we followed, we didn't follow your parents? No. <laughs> Cause that wouldn't be as fun. I think we talked them into not following them. Yeah. Cause they drove too. It's like, what did, we, you know, we'll meet you there. But no, cause when we got, we, when we, we got to town and we met my, my grand, my granddad, <laughs> remember that? Yeah, that's right. Just driving along the road. Anyway, um, but the opposite of the question is, so I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, there's lots of things that I'd like my kids to be able to experience, but I'm also glad that they don't, they're not doing anything as risky as we did, so it's really tough to, to answer. But what do they get to do that we kind of wish that we got to do? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, I mean, our kids our kids come to the studio and they're in videos and stuff. I mean, I think we would be eating it up if. That's true. You know, if if uh, if we had access, you know, I mean, we're we're still. That's why we're so. You know, we're living our childhood dreams that we didn't couldn't even articulate. So it's like, man, if if uh, I mean, your dad worked at the at the law school, and they just happened to have this like this, this setup with two VCRs, and and you thought. It, well, that was our opportunity to edit video for the first time, but that was like heaven. It's like I'm going in. I I got Dad's key and I'm going into the to the two VCR room. Yeah. I mean, it's like think about if it wasn't two VCRs, but it was this. Like, hey, I can be on my dad's show or something. You know, it's like and our you know we we filmed we're filming some stuff. We we film stuff with Shando all the time. Mm-hmm. Like getting them into it because they're so stinking cute, and the way that they play off of each other is hilarious because they're so different. Well, and we did a similar thing uh, with Locke and Lincoln back. Was it the mythical show? Yeah, the they, mythical they show. They came in and did a segment. Yeah, it was like a, they when they were cute. <laughs> um, and, but they don't. But they're not. But they don't want to be a part of it. Now. I mean, it's not like they're living a dream. It's just like they get a kick out of it. 
I mean, Lily actually said, you know, I'd like to be in a video again. She still thinks it's Oh yeah, because she was she she did some stuff last year. Yeah. Um when we she's gonna come in next week and like watch us film some stuff. She's excited about it. So, so I'm I'm glad that they do f- feel that way, but like we our minds would have been blown, man, if it was like well, I don't know, maybe we wouldn't have cared. If like we would have grown up if our dads were like worked at the public access television studio or something. I don't know what the equivalent, that's kind of the, what the equivalent would well, have been. Well, the first thing that came to my mind was the stuff that our kids get to do. And this is, uh, you know, partly because of our jobs and, and partly because of where we live, uh, but also this is a much more travel oriented generation. There's yeah. a, just, it's much more, um, you know, people fly a lot more, people go a lot further. But just like I think about the vacations that we've been on with our family, our kids have been to Australia, our kids have been to uh, Europe, and you know, Locke's been to Africa. You're, you're you're gonna be in. Lily went to China. She went to China. Then you're gonna with a friend of hers. And you're gonna be in that part of the country, uh, part of the world again. You know, and our kids get to eat all this amazing food. When amazing food for me was Bushonis. You yeah, know. you're talking about amazing food in LA. Yeah, uh, yeah well, and around the world too. And, and uh, I don't know because I, and I, this, I feel yeah, it would have been nice to be spoiled like our kids I'm are. Of, I'm, basically what you're saying. I'm of two minds yeah. about this though because I kind of think that the fact that really up until I graduated college, Shoney's was still that was as good as it got for me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm. I think that I'm in, I'm able to even I think you adjust pretty quickly, but I think I'm you know I'm able to kind of appreciate that we, we didn't I didn't we didn't go any we didn't we traveled a little bit but we would like go to Georgia you know remember to that see family remember but, that time that my mom took me and you to Carowinds yeah I'll never forget it because you, those kinds of things were so there were anomalies in our experience and it was just going to an amusement park near Charlotte pretty awesome yeah. Would have blown our you minds. You want to go to, to Carowinds? Is that what you're asking? Would have blown our minds to go to Six Flags. That wouldn't have been that much different. Yeah. So I. So I don't know. I. In, in one sense, I think what I'm saying is there's things that come to mind that I would like to do and I'd like them to do. But in another, at the same time, I'm kind of glad that I had the life I had and they have the life they have. Yeah. Don't have the power to change it. So let's just reconcile. Yeah. It. Just accept it. Jonathan Garlinghouse. If you guys were to face each other in a quote. Dad sports triathlon, and then in parentheses he put darts, pool, bowling. Is this a thing or did he make that up? Is a dad sports triathlon a thing and it consists of darts, pool, and bowling? His question is, what strengths would you bring to it and who would win overall? Well, I mean, I'm, I am not, I'm trying as hard as I can when I throw darts on the show. Yep. I mean, I'm just, I, I just got no chance, man. And we're so, we're so close to that board, I don't, and I'm horrible at it. I, but I don't think your weakness is the targeting. It it kind of is. I think your weakness is the guessing. No, are you no, historically the, that far from your guesses? Yeah, I mean, if if you were to like, if if you were to superimpose like an actual dart board. And the the amount of fidelity there, I'm telling you right well, now. Well, somebody would, should do that. I would be horrible at it. Um, but, but we've we have well pool. Not great at that. You're not good at so you would beat me at darts. Well, but we've po- done pool and bowling on. Well, okay. If we if th- if we're judging this by performance on Good Mythical Morning, I actually think historically you would win. We played pool one time and you were. Uh, you ha- you were better at it th- than me. I don't think I'm that bad of a pool player, but you beat me on that day. And uh, and then bowling when we did the flame bowling, uh, I was be- I, at least I was in the, at least in the edit you 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 got more of the strikes. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm if we're bowling one game of bowling, one one is it called a round? I don't know what it's a set. I don't know what it's called. A frame. I would. I think I'd beat you, but if we went two, my, yeah. my fingers give out. But uh, here's the thing, though, is that if you isolate this down to pure, pure competition and, not, and entertainment value not being like it's not being filmed, mm-hmm. and it's just simply 
Like it, I kind of go into a, a very specific mode in those scenarios. Yeah, which sends me into another mode. So your mode is. I get very I ha- competitive. I have to win. I would, my, be, I would be tough to beat if my, it was just about winning. Yeah, and it sends me into my mode which is, why am I doing this again? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, searching for a, I'm searching for a motivation. Um, yeah, I'm just like, I really don't, like even in winning, I'm like looking around like for some sort of like an instruction manual. Like when you I don't, win. like, yeah, I just, I don't, I just don't really. Well, it's, it's the winning you know, is I, the reward. I don't really care that much. The, it's, it, the, it's, the, the winning, that's it. I do think that. It's not I, the champagne that I might could really, I might could really work up some gumption and I, th- I think I could beat you at bowling. I think I think that would be a good competition. Um, it, I also think definitely be close. I think like frisbee golf. I think that would be pretty even. Like I'm, yeah. I like to think I'm pretty good with a frisbee. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we 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 did that. We used to do that in college. But I blow you away at napping. Is that a dad? That's a dad thing. I'm just saying. Yeah, dad's gonna like sit, like hit the couch and just. Who's gonna go out first? Like I could definitely blow you out of the water. I can't. Napping. I can't nap competitively. That's, like that's that's a given. I mean, after we had that meeting, but before we came in here, you snored within thirty seconds. Well, yeah, I laid down on the couch. I was like, I'm gonna take an. Uh, we got a meeting in twelve minutes. I'm gonna take a twelve minute nap, and uh, Jade was sitting on my lap, and I even had to pee, and I had to move Jade because she was on my bladder. Hmm. I had to pee. I had a dog sleeping on top of me because she's constantly sleeping. And I know I fell asleep because I did that jerk thing. You're such a jerk. I, I did the jerk. <laughs> I actually looked it up. Did, did you see, it's called a hypnagogic jerk. Yeah. Did you, you said I was snoring, is that? Within, a, w- no exaggeration within a minute, there was a, there was like a. <laughs> that, was, that was when I jerked. Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> also called a hypnic jerk. Or sleep starts. Sleep starts? Sleep starts, like I, I think that's short for like startle. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I have, so that I have that happen, but in a 12, in a 12 minute. That's uh, why I'm a little grumpy right now. A 12 minute, what? A 12 minute supposed nap. supposed to help. Well, it should have been, I think it should have been 20 minutes as power nap, right? Not 12 minutes. But a 12 minute nap would not, I, even under the best circumstances, I wouldn't go to sleep in 12 minutes. It would just be, I'm resting my eyes. I'm really trying to go to sleep. But I literally went to sleep in. A minute. <laughs> Again, so it's like, I'm I'm saying let's put that in there. But that's not part of the triathlon, it's just darts, pool, and bowling. And you know, we wrapped about, in that thoughtful guy thing, we talked about the hypnagogic jerk. And it's like, uh, I wonder if it's a defense mechanism for something like uh, sleeping on a cliff or just top bunking. And oh, they, they yeah. don't know why it happens, but the, it's but the, the same reason you find people creepy. The the prevailing theory, if you're interested, is um, that like from a from like a evolutionary like primal version of us, it's like sleeping. If you if you're like a like a primate sleeping in a tree, like if you if you if you fall asleep, then you're like the the relaxation of your muscles then triggers a reflex to like grab to grab so you don't fall out of the tree. I thought it was that, so you don't fall out of the womb as a baby. <laughs> fall out of the womb. <laughs> that's, not, happen. that's not up to you, that's up to the womb. Oh. So yeah, I think we were right about the top bunking thing or like sleeping on a cliff, sleeping in a tree. It's when when that jerk happens. That makes sense to me. So I'm I'm winning at that too. So I'm Well you add oh, I could add golf to the dad thing and then I win. I mean, if we're adding things that we're good at, then we can just add ad nauseum. Getting nauseated, I'd win at that. <laughs> uh, how about another question? One, one last question before we uh, the wreck and effect. Okay. Uh, this is from Austin Campen. Uh, touches on something we've talked about before, but this is a different analysis Where of it. Where does it touch it? If it was confirmed that we were in the matrix or some equivalent simulation, which of course we are, and there, is that, your words that was this is Austin. He's saying all this. Oh, and there was a way out. Would you take it? 
You'd be leaving your family, friends, and life behind for an unknown real world. Would it be worth it? So obviously we talked about, in fact, we, we made a, a valiant attempt to escape the simulation. Right, we tell On hands. this very show. We two guys are Link and Rhett, and, and we, we know we, we are, are in a simulation, simulation and, and we, we want, want out now. It did not work. Unless we escaped into a simulation that was exactly the same as the one we left. Cause you were in a. Which there's no way to prove that we didn't. And so, so you kinda answered the question that like, if you wanted to escape, you were, you were having some, some, some alone time and you were thinking about if you were, if you could break out, would you? And you said out loud. I was in the hot tub and I said, I know this is a simulation, let me out now. Or something. And I want out. And I want out. Because I thought that maybe that was the key was just to acknowledge it. But then we tried it as buddies holding hands. It doesn't work as buddies. But but but, but the thing I didn't but consider. That's your answer. But your answer at the time was well, you would do it. And you seemed to just drag me along for the. No and okay and here's what here's what I'll say. My knee jerk. Your hypnagogic jerk. My hypnagogic jerk answer to this question is that by default I would get out of the simulation because it would be moving towards truth, right? So it, so. And I'm now, now I'm going to think about it on a second on a second level and maybe take it back. But I'm saying my knee jerk reaction to it is, oh, this is a simulation, yeah, but yet there's a truth beyond that that you can actually ascend to. Yes, I'm going to go there regardless of what's on the other side. Well, and you say ascend, but it may be descend too. Yeah, it could be. I think that's the point. Yeah. But uh, Austin has got me thinking differently about it because. Now all of a sudden, what he's saying is that okay, Austin could, had to remind you that you have a family. <laughs> well, no, it's like okay, so you you in, in you know obviously our family, but you've got your your, your dog Jade is in the room with us in in okay. Jenna's lap over there. Can I see that? So can I see the dog? And uh, I don't have any proof of this, but you seem to be as attached to Jade as you are to any human that you are in relationship with. Now. For a moment, consider that Jade is not real. She is only, she's just the result of some clever programming. Uh, but by definition, excising yourself from the simulation would mean that you can no longer be in relationship with her. I'm not doing it. I mean, I'm, you know, Yeah, I got too much. I got too much to lose, man. Look at me. I got it going on. I mean, you painted a simple. You've painted a simple picture for me. But the, it's not what? real. It's not real. Neither am I. No, no. That's exactly the, no. You are real, and you can get out now. Maybe. Jade is an avatar of another dog that you can make a connection with in outside of the simulation. Maybe your wife is an avatar of another individual that you can make a connection with outside of the simulation. I don't know if the simulation exists just for you or if we're all avatars in the simulation. We, you don't know that until you get out of the simulation. Why would the, yeah, why would it be, it seems, it seems, Easier for me to believe that it would be worse outside of the simulation because I'm biased because I've got I got a hashtag blessed life, okay? And it's so it seems like, but it seems cruel that it it's all fake, it's all a simulation. So it seems like that cruelty that set it up. It seems cruel. Why does it seem cruel? Because it's not real. You're hashtag blessed, man. I know, but I'm just saying on a. But it's. But it's a farce. It's a lie. It's a lie that's a favor, I guess, to me. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just an experiment. I don't know. But you can now. If I knew definitively, like this is the thing: is that how could it be better? I mean, again, it's like I'm. The people in the Matrix had the had, that they, they were they came out of the Matrix and saw the real world and then made decisions to stay because they could they could come back right. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying this is like an all or nothing deal. Like if you if you leave, you can't get back, and you don't know what's on the other side. For me, 
the unknown and the fact that yeah, it is a simulation and you can get out of it. Um, the, my, the curiosity is too high. And then I would just justify it. I would be like, of course I love my, my family. Uh, of but, course I love my life. But if they are ultimately just a program, then I'm not really. I'm, I'm not really, and I'm just. I'm just in inside the simulation. I'm not really. I'm not re- losing. I'm losing an idea. I'm not losing actual beings. Again, this is like the robot relationship conversation. I thought we became convinced that, like, yes, we could have what would experientially be a viable relationship with a robot, and we were cool with that. But that's self-aware like, self-deception. So just extend that to an entire family of robots that you're, it's like surprise, your family is robots. I just think the fact that you don't, that there's something that you could know, that there's something on the outside, that's just, it's too much. With the, with the, the robots, th- that, I know what the alternative is and I can slip into it at any time. I can cease to, I can be like, this relationship is just with a robot or I can enter into it and make myself believe it. But that makes it sound like, given the way you describe it, like okay, you would go to Mars. You would leave. You would leave your family to discover the next frontier. No, because my family is real in that scenario. I'm leaving people who have the capacity. That not not only is it what I feel, but they also have the capacity to grieve. But this in the simulation, they do. They, they're basic. They do. They could. They would grieve. Yeah, but I if my if a robot was about to kill my dog, I'd kill the robot. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know how that applies. It's like you don't you don't someone's not about to your family member is not about to kill I you. I have a bias towards biological life. Sue me. I have a bias towards my own current happiness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, that's cool, man. I I don't know what happens to me when I leave the simulation. One day I'll figure it out. I don't know if my body just drops. You, you, I, you're living I, a good and I, life, man. and I just die. I mean, the chances of uh, again, I've there's there's a lot of people who are living difficult lives. I mean, we are in a percentage of people on Earth who are living like. I mean, we don't deserve how but, good we've but got. You're it. assuming that the chances that it's better than what we've got. <laughs> But you're assuming nil, that man. my primary motivation is increased comfort. I mean, I do want to speak to my home as a slug. I know. That so. is that is true. Uh, right. But my primary motivation for moving into the next thing is not increased comfort I think as much as it's increased discovery. I think your primary motive is seeming like you could take a provocative stance. No, but cut, get, no. See, because if you were to adopt my opinion, that would be true about you. But that's not true about me. I want Sandra to come over because I want to discover what it would be like for Sandra to have a, a special soundtrack when, and when flashing you, lights. Give me an example of when you have sacrificed present comfort for future discovery, for potential discovery. Potential discovery. It happens all the time. Uh, like. Tasting the new Carl's Jr. B- b- burger. So what? You're <laughs> what, you're denying yourself. What what are you denying? What are you, you giving up? You don't know how it's going to go down, man. A lame example. Okay, rack your brain. Hot chicken. <laughs> it's not comfortable. I wanted the hottest one to see what it was like. I didn't think it was going to be but good. If, but if Instagram didn't exist, would you you would have done it? I did it the other day with, with no Instagram. Okay, that's true. Um. No, but I'll, also I don't. That's not much of a sacrifice. Hold on, but uh, no, I think our whole career, though, I don't think that it's been primarily motivated by more comfort. No, that's true. Any, but any type of life, like you in the Spartan race, it wasn't about comfort. It was about self discovery, man. I think it's human nature. If you're like. Listen, I can't promise you what this is going is going to be like when you go into this room. It could be really bad or it could really be good. The thing is, is if you go into this room, the thing I can promise is it will be mind-blowing. You're not going to go in that room? 
I'm gonna go into that room. But you ne can never come back from the room. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't care, I'm going in, man. That's the problem. I'm going in. You can't, the problem is coming back. Like we have, I don't think we've been faced with that. Well, I don't think, I I'm trying to come up, the examples that you've given are not like that, like it's a valve. You can't go back. Tattoo? <laughs> Getting a tattoo? I know, you gotta, you gotta keep thinking, man. I I'm not convinced that you would do it. I'm just saying as a, as a priors. principle. No, I, when I was in the hot tub, I was really trying to get out. And I was really trying to get out when we were here. <laughs> okay. Um, I wasn't, that's why I, I had so much fun trying. Let us know what you would do, hashtag Ear Biscuits, uh, but I do wanna leave you with a wreck and effect. Oh yeah, give me a wreck, man, it's your turn. Uh, check, baby, check. I'm, I'm, I, I tend to recommend shows, I, I've noticed. I'm okay. gonna recommend another, uh, another show. Um, for those of you who like weird, it's just, it's weird and it's not for everybody and that's why I like it. Uh, it just, the second season just uh, came back on Netflix, The OA. Did you ever watch that? No, I didn't. Anybody else in here watch that? It's a sci-fi situation. Yeah, uh, and I'm not gonna, Basically what the show's about, by telling you what the show's about is is basically a, the, sort of like the season one spoiler, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, it just, because you, once you figure out what, what's going on, it's, so it's, it's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a mystery aspect. It's just super weird. So if you like weird sci-fi, yeah. is, is it like Black Mirror? Uh, there, it has Black Mirror-ish uh, elements in that, you know, they're kind of delving in and asking some some philosophical questions of what if this could happen, what if this were true, and it is a concept that, uh, you know, people have explored in, in philosophy, and it's kind of just exploring what it would be like. And then, are there any jolly laughs? It is not funny at all. Well, you gotta have a little comic relief. It would be nice if it was funny. It's not funny at all. Uh, is it is the writing good? Is the acting good? Is it more about yes? The writing and acting is good. Is there any stars that I would recognize? Uh, you would recognize the uh, antagonist, but I don't know what he's from, but you would recognize him. Okay. And then the second season, we just started watching that. Jesse and I, it's one of the shows that we enjoy together. Just started watching that and it was just like, I, cause I was thinking, where are they gonna go? Where are they gonna go from here? Is it rated R? Is it for the, for the kids? Hmm. It's not bad. I don't you think you kids could watch it. Can I start with season two? No, definitely not. Okay. I and honestly Away <laughs> I don't know if you'd like it. I because I it's just one of those things that it's like it's weird. In fact, and then you know, my uh, good friends Lance and Lacey who are, you know, the kind of the authority on weird, without being prompted, they just texted in the text thread that they have with me and Justin, they were like you guys watch the OA? Super weird, I think you'd like it. And we were like, oh, we love it. We watch it together. But you don't think I would like it? Well, I got, I got limited screen time. You, I'm the thing I've observed, trying to catch the thing I have, have observed about the way that you analyze television shows and movies is you have a difficult time enjoying things that don't have likable characters. And this is not, I don't find the main character particularly likable and I don't find anybody very likable. I liked um I like the Hand, story. I liked Handmaid's Tale, but I didn't like House of Cards at the beginning. But I, I watched You a lot also of didn't it. like that uh what's that that show on Showtime uh or maybe it's HBO that's about the rich family that's supposed to be like the Oh, uh, the Descendants. The uh, it's supposed to be like Rupert Murdoch's family. Succession. succession. You, you you didn't like that when you started watching it because you were like, right. I don't like yeah. any of the people, and I'm like, yep. that's why I like it because I don't like any other people. Yeah. Uh, I, so if you so, don't, it's, it's so harsh. If you don't, if you like to watch shows where everyone is unlikable, <laughs> you'll love the OA. Really? Okay. It's the, but it's not like that. It's not like the main character is, a, is not, the protagonist is not a jerk, and you don't like hate them, they're not like morally corrupt. It's I just, loved House back in the day. I don't think you'd, he still was think very, you'd like it. He was so unlikable, he was likable. And that was the device. There you go, okay, maybe there's hope. It's different. All right. 
I'm gonna tell my uh, I'm gonna tell my house to play the next episode of OA for me. See how see how it responds. House, whenever I walk up to you and enter your front, start playing the OA on every screen. What if I ask the house to play house? It might just implode. Well, it's probably smarter than that. Like play if, myself. What breakdown? <laughs> <laughs> you want your whole house to collapse? Ask it to play house. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I ain't doing that. <laughs> Hashtag ear biscuits. Talk to us. Keep listening. Don't give up on us. Yeah, it'll get better. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.